I never thought it could get this bad. It's like everyone's just pressing in on me, not giving me any personal space to let me make my own independent decisions. They expect me to live up to all their standards and be what they want me to be, but I refuse to let them control me. I'm always being overwhelmed by this stress and pressure. It comes from everyone, from teachers, my parents, my own so-called friends. But there was this one guy that wasn't like the rest. He didn't judge me for my failures. Instead, he just stood there and told me to get back up and try again. The first time he did that was when some people at school were bullying me. They were ripping my bag off my back, throwing everything out of it. But as soon as he came into the equation, everything changed. It was mid-autumn during Year 12 when we sat in the park just down near the river, talking about whatever nonsense came to our heads. But that was the day that everything changed. We sat there for ages, just talking about nothing. <laughs> the sort of nonsense that we come up with, I have no idea why we'd even discuss it. We just talked for hours, but as the hours went by, I looked at my friend that helped me all those years ago, and my mind started wondering, why did he ever help a guy like me? The thought never really had crossed my mind, so I asked him, but he seemed agitated by the subject. I kept on asking, but he got annoyed with me. That's when I knew something was not quite right. For the time that I'd known James, I knew that he was a laid back sort of guy and it was always fairly difficult to get him annoyed. That's how I knew that there was something wrong. I had a feeling that there was something in the dark that James was hiding. But no matter how many times I asked, he just wouldn't want to talk about it. I kept pressing him because knowing the reason why he befriended me so long ago mystified and haunted me. Eventually, he got fed up with the matter and stormed off. He just left me there, but to my horror, he was gone before I could do anything. I ran to him, but I was too late. Never had I felt this before in my life. Never. Two months have passed and my burning heart has caused me pain every second since. I remember those days of our friendship just like yesterday. My mind kept going back to the memory of sitting there next to him. Time and time again. I just wish it could have been different. But now, everything has changed. some new communication skills themselves. This is because it lies a potential death trap. And that way the person with whom you are communicating will feel. How many of you are feeling like hell? How many of you are feeling exhausted? How many of you are in... Much research has been done into the power and the do's and don'ts of physical face-to-face -face communication. But it's generally agreed that less than 10% of the importance of getting your meaning across to us. Speculate on the nature of the injuries right now, but we did talk to some witnesses who were here just seconds after they heard the impact. We're talking about a terrible, terrible tragedy here. It's hard for me to explain why that was the case. Lack of communication kills. Committed suicide since her death. Communication is the reason why we're alive. If we didn't have communication, we would be here today. This car ended up hitting and killing the teenager. You are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment. What we've got here is failure to communicate.